Orthographic projection. So what are we talking about here? Orthographic projections or orthogonal projections. This is how we're going to take a three-dimensional object and smush it onto a two-dimensional piece of paper, two-dimensional computer screen. It's a form of parallel projection. Remember parallel projection, that's where all of these lines are perfectly parallel to one another. So we're not diminishing and getting smaller as we go farther away. This would be like if you're close up to something. And so everything in one direction is all going to be parallel to one another. And we're looking at the orthogonal projection planes. So orthogonal is just 90 degree angle. <clears throat> So each of these, even though when you smush it out onto a 2D piece of paper, it doesn't look like they're 90 degrees, but these are all supposed to be 90 degree corners and the side is 90 degrees from the top and the top is 90 degrees from the front. And so everything on here is going to be parallel to one another or 90 degrees to one another. And we're going to walk around the three dimensional object and try and show everyone what it looks like straight from the front, what it looks like straight from the side, or straight from the top. Now when you see just one side of it, like if you look at this top view, you can't tell what is up and what is down. These are steps. This side is higher than this side, but if you just look at the top view, you can't tell that. You have to come around to the side view and then you can start to see those different heights, or like if you look at it from the front, Again, it just looks like two rectangles, and you can't tell which rectangle is forward and which one is back. So all of these are a bit of a puzzle, and you have to combine what's happening in each of these views to piece together the overall picture of what that three-dimensional object is supposed to be. The worksheets in your book will go through two different scenarios going from a three-dimensional object to creating the two-dimensional views, and then after we're good at this, we'll go from the two-dimensional views back to trying to piece together that three-dimensional object. 3D to 2D is easier, so let's start with this one. So we have a depiction of some three-dimensional object, and we're going to try and fill in the different views. The standard way to do this in America, now the rest of the world does it differently, sorry about that. In America, the top left view, that's going to be looking down at the top of the box and kind of look at how this is oriented, okay? So this is going to be twisted around, so we're reading this right side up, and then we we're going to have the front view in the lower left-hand corner and the right view in the lower right-hand corner. Now this cube actually has six sides. A lot of parts that you make are going to be symmetrical. The front is the same as the back, or top is the same as the bottom. And in most scenarios, you'll get all the information that you need from just these three views. Now that's not always the case, and sometimes you have to show more than just these three sides, but we'll start with one with just these three sides. The first thing to do is to just draw a basic outline of the overall shape. Is it a rectangle? Is it a cube? In our case, if we were to start this out in a CNC machine with just a block of metal, it would start out as just a straight cube. So I'm not trying to fill in any dimensions yet, but we'll set up some grid paper and just get kind of the overall shape of everything. The next thing to do is to pick one of the sides, and you're not going to try and map the entire thing out at once. Just pick one feature at a time to map out. So let's say we're going to look to see what is happening at the top. And I'm not even going to try and map out everything looking down at it. I'm just going to take this top surface. So the first top surface, and I'm going to map out everything on the very outside of this cube. So it's kind of a shape of a chair or an H or a J. So just try and get that top surface and then realize how this is going to be twisted 
when it comes into our 2D orthographic view. So we're going to take this and twist it on here and make sure that when we map out our front and right hand side, these corners where these features wrap around one another, these corners are going to line up correctly with one another. So there's the top. Next, let's look at everything on the front view and pay attention to how the edges on this thing wrap around. So features on one side are going to correspond to features on the other side of where they wrap around to one another. Again, I'm not going to look at everything from the front view, just one piece of it. So what's just on this very surface and how one surface wraps around to the surface of another. So here's that front surface and make sure those edges line up with one another. So just see how one side wraps to the other side. Last but not least, let's look what's happening on the right side. So the right side is going to line up with both the top and the front. So really pay attention to how those edges are corresponding to one another and wrapping around next to one another. Again, I'm going to just grab this very top surface. So not worrying about all the features going on yet, just the very top surface that wraps around to the top and front. So here are the edges we're worried about. You can see how the top wraps around to that square up there. And then we can also see how that rectangle wraps around on that corner down there too. So we're corresponding to the top corner that is looking straight down at the edge and then the bottom corner that's wrapping around on the side there. Now that we have everything mapped out that's on the very surface of this object, let's start trying to understand how those interior features fit in as well. I'm going to take one step back on the right hand side. So we're going back one block and we're going to map out this kind of zigzag shape that's one block back. And as you map these interior surfaces out, Make sure again to think through how those edges wrap around. So how does the top of that wrap around? How does the side of that wrap around? So you can see what features correspond to what features and how each of these sides is related to one another. So really pay attention to those edges. And you can see we now have to add another line onto the front of this. So if I'm looking straight at the front, I can see both of those sides of this new feature. So it, and it's going to look like just a straight line going all the way down. You can't tell by looking at the front what's forward and what's backward to it. We're going to see an edge. We'll see a corner going all the way down that's mapped out over here. the last bit of the right hand view. So now we've, here's the front back one square and this is back two squares. Where would that map out? So if we're looking straight at the right hand view, this light colored green, this is all the way to the front. And then if you step back one step, here's our zigzag and step back two steps, you have this final square all the way back. And again, think about how that final square corresponds to the other views. So we're, we're looking at the edge of it over here. And if I look down at the top of this, what is that going to look like from the top? And this is where we start using are dashed hidden lines. So if I look through this surface, underneath this yellow H, there's this little cave underneath the yellow H. And so you can, you can draw that feature into the top by using a dashed hidden line. So you're looking through the top to this hollow area underneath there. Exploring a little bit on the front side. 
So one step back, we have a square right in the center. Again, look at how those edges wrap around. If you look at it from the top, we're looking at this same hidden line that we've already drawn on. If you look through the top, we've got this surface back there. So there's that hidden line. Taking another step back, here's a square on the upper right hand so corner. And again, think about how those edges wrap around from one side to another side. And the very last piece here. Now this guy is a little bit frustrating because we can't tell how far down it goes. So we're going to have to kind of guess that if we look at this from the front and we're looking through a surface at the feature in the back, that's going to give us another hidden line that there's something carved out back there. We don't know how deep it is because we can't see the back surface of it. And this is kind of illustrating one of the problems with these orthographic views. It's, it's sometimes very hard to get all the angles and get all the information that you need. And you don't realize that you're not telling somebody all the information they need until you hear feedback from them. Okay, so there's the hidden view from the front. And if we want to draw on the hidden lines on the right hand side, so looking through these surfaces, this guy is carved out. Again, we don't know how deep this hole goes, but it's behind all those surfaces. Up here, this will end up being a solid line instead of a hidden line. Whenever there's an edge in front of a hidden feature, the solid line will get priority. So you'll see the so solid line will always go on top of the hidden lines. And our very last feature, if we're looking down from the top, we have this kind of L shape. Now looking straight down on it, we won't see the entire L shape. We'll just see this edge of it. So again, here would be the hidden line. And we've already added that hidden line and pay attention to how that would wrap around into the different views. So which edge corresponds with which edge. So this L shape, you'd be looking at the side of it. It's only one square up over here. That's how it wraps around to the right hand side. And I'll just leave this as a question mark. We don't know if it just goes down one block or two blocks, if we have to add in a line here. So there's kind of two holes. If we're looking at the front, there's a hole all the way through right over here. And then looking down at the top, there may or may not be a hole coming all the way through on the side. This is something that I had created in CAD, so let me show you what the views actually look like. Here's the top. You can see that H on the surface with the other features underneath. Here is that front view, and look at it and try and visualize which of these surfaces is forward and which is kind of popped back a little bit. And finally, here's the right-hand view. And as you look at these, Pay attention to how all of these are lined up with one another. So which surfaces are lined up with which surface. And this is going to give you a clue for what is on the top, especially the front view. The front view is really going to show you what wraps around to being on the top surface, which wraps around to being on the front of the right hand surface. So the edges and how they correspond to one another. When we go from 2D to 3D, this is going to be the information you need to figure out what that 3D view is. So here's that cube in CAD, and you can watch to see how it rotates around and one feature maps out into another feature. So think about where those hidden lines are coming from and where everything is and how it wraps around the corners from one view to another. And if you can kind of get the hang of it on one object, it'll be a little bit easier to piece together some other objects too. And you're just going to take it one little piece at a time. You don't try and do the whole thing at once, just one little piece at a time, one feature at a time.
Here's the next challenge, and that is to take the two-dimensional orthographic views and piece these together to create the three-dimensional object out of it. So start by thinking about that view cube again. So this time we have the views and we want to piece these together and create the three-dimensional object out of them. To get started, first you might as well draw a cube. So again, look at the general shape of it. Is it a rectangle? Is it a square? And start with just one solid block and we're going to start carving away at that block. If you want to add in some grid to your block, sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. So do whatever you can to just get a rough outline for the general shape of what that three-dimensional object is going to be. The next thing I like to do is to look for any holes that are happening. And by holes, I mean, see how there's no line here? This little square must go all the way through. This corner is completely gone. There's a little tunnel that goes all the way through. So kind of just walk around the perimeter and find chunks that are missing. And once we find one of those chunks, we can go ahead and just carve that entire chunk out of there. So again, we're not going to do the entire thing at once. We're just going to take one feature at a time and carve out one little piece at a time. Here's another little corner that we can carve out. So it goes all the way through. We can just carve that right off of our block. Here's the last chunk that goes all the way through. So just keep walking around and carving out all of those holes in the object. Step two, whatever features are left that haven't been carved away already, just pick one thing again, just one little piece at a time. So this square, I still need to figure out what that square is from. Once you have a, a feature chosen, you're going to find that feature in the other projections. So it's over here on the right hand side. That looks like those two are at the same height. It's at the top, those two look like those might be correlated to one another. And they're going to line up. So those corners are going to have to line up. The features are going to line up. So try and just figure out where that same feature is with respect to the top, with respect to the right. And once you see it on each of the different sides, that's going to tell you what the elevation is, okay? So how far back it's pushed, how far up it is, and you get that information by comparing the same thing in each of those three views. Once you have it figured out where the elevation is, you're going to carve it out. So here's that next view. And sometimes just how that square is oriented, it starts becoming hard to tell what is what on there. And if that is happening, get out a highlighter, get out some markers, use some hatching patterns. I like to make my hatching pattern parallel to the side it's on. So just shade in what you need to shade in so you can tell what you're looking at still. Each new feature just go from one line to the next until you have everything accounted for. So what's something else on here that we have looking strange? Now if I look at the right hand side here, this line, I don't have anything on here to create this line yet. So let's go ahead and take this as our next feature. And our next step is we're going to try and find this line, these two faces, on the other two sides. So what is this correlating to on the top and what is this correlating to on the front? On the top, it looks like maybe this is correlated to one another and then it's going to be that upper right hand corner. So once again, compare those sides and see if you can figure out what is forward, what is back, what is creating those, those lines. 
So this, it looks like we need to cut another chunk out of the right hand side here. Okay, so once you've compared the elevations and found the next little piece, go ahead and carve out that next little piece. And you're just gonna keep walking through every single piece of this until every line and every corner is accounted for. The last step is to look at everything and make sure it's all accounted for. Okay, so we have this kind of a chair and the back of the chair standing up. Initially, you can ignore the hidden lines. If you ignore the hidden lines, it's easier to see those flat surfaces. So just ignore the hidden lines and see if you can find the entire surface over there. And then once you have the surfaces, then worry about the hidden line. So this hidden line is the flat plane that's behind that little cube. This hidden line is gonna be this chunk that's cut out. So just kind of walk around from side to side and make sure you can identify what each line is and what each feature is on there. I know that CAD can help you with this. And for those of you who do already have some experience and might be tempted to just sketch it up in 3D to check your work, I wanna encourage everybody to try and do these exercises in your head. So this is about more than just learning AutoCAD. This is about developing the spatial visualization areas in your brain. And that's gonna help you with everything from drawing free body diagrams for physics, to doing vector analysis in your math classes, to you know anything you create. You create it first in your mind. You don't create it usually first in CAD. So in order to have that visual picture of what you're trying to make, this is kind of the exercises to help you develop that three-dimensional piece of your brain. If you find yourself getting really frustrated trying to understand these problems, and each of them is a unique puzzle, and it, it really can be frustrating when you first start out, go ahead and create an actual physical model for yourself. So whether you use Play-Doh or cookie dough or a bunch of little sugar cubes or whatever you want to use, get out a knife and actually physically make it. And that can a lot of times help you see what's, what's happening and start with a block and just start carving away at that block, just like a CNC machine. And let me know, I don't want anyone to get super, super frustrated. So hopefully you can make it through this part and then that'll be one more thing that'll make you really appreciate AutoCAD because it does help share three-dimensional information and visualize three-dimensional information a lot better than a 2D piece of paper can. We'll see you next time.